So a few weeks back, I switched over to Brave. Now, I know a lot of people have talked about Brave already, but I just wanted to give my experience on it and just basically how I feel about the app. Personally, it's been a pretty good experience for the most part, but I do have a few problems with it. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So if you somehow managed to make it to this video without knowing what Brave is, basically it's a Chromium based web browser with a built in tracking blocker and various other things to basically make a more secure web browsing experience. Now the reason you want to have a tracking blocker is to block things like cookies that'll follow you from website to website that'll, you know how if you look on Facebook for example, you'll see ads that are very targeted to what you just searched for. So that's handled through things like tracking cookies. So what Brave does is attempts to block a lot of those and obviously it can't block everything. So before you say, oh, but Brave misses this and this and this and this. It can't block everything because if you do block everything, you're going to have a very poor web experience. The only way to be completely safe on the web is to completely disable JavaScript. But if you do that, then you get a very poor browsing experience because a lot of websites are built with basically the web page being generated from JavaScript. So Brave obviously isn't going to protect you from everything, but it does eliminate most of the ads that are out there and it does eliminate most of the trackers. So because of this, it also has the ability to actually enable them per website. So you're gonna have websites that do actually break if you don't have trackers enabled. For example, my work website, if I don't have trackers enabled, for whatever reason, it breaks. I think it has to do with all of the redirects it's doing because it's on like an Azure server. I don't know how they've managed to make this website so terrible, but it completely breaks when I have trackers disabled. So for that website, I do have to actually enable them. And the other thing it does, so I did mention it has an ad-free browsing experience, but it's not just your regular old ad blocker. So what they also do is they have their own sort of ad network. So usually on Linux, they'll pop up as like little desktop notifications. I'll see if one shows up during this video. But what those notifications are, are just little advertisements that basically will give you a portion of their cryptocurrency. So that's called BAT. And you can use that BAT token to then go and just fund creators, fund websites, whatever you want to do with it. Or you could even keep it for yourself if you want to. So that's pretty much a rundown on what Brave is. So there is something I wanted to get to though. So I did mention that it is a Chromium based web browser. Now, I'm not a big fan of this. Before we get to that, actually, let's just show you what it looks like because I kind of forgot about that. So this is what Brave looks like. Nothing too special. It's it's just your regular standard web browser. It's nothing too special in the way it looks. Anyway, we'll get back to that shortly. So I mentioned it's Chromium based. So the problem I have with this is I really don't like working on the Chromium monopoly. So basically, if you don't know, there are two major web engines. So you have Chromium and you have Firefox. I guess you also have whatever Apple's doing, but that's fine. Apple can do their own thing. But you have Chromium and you have Firefox. So the problem is the majority of web browsers are built on Chromium. And the problem that I have with this is that when you have one web engine that completely takes over, what they can do is they can start redefining the spec. And Google has done this before. So they'll completely ignore the W3C spec, which is the basic web spec, and then do their own thing. And then Firefox just has to actually adapt to it because you can't just stop supporting features on the web because that'll start breaking websites. So the problem I have with it is that if you give Chromium too much power, Google can basically decide what they want to do with the way that web development should go forward. So that's my problem with it being Chromium based. That could be easily fixed. Obviously this isn't easy, but it could be fixed with a Firefox based build. Now I would love to see that, but I don't expect it anytime soon. So the nice thing about using Brave though, I did say I don't like it being Chromium based, but it is so much quicker than the competition that it really bothers me that I have to use it. So it gives you a little thing up here about how much time you saved. I don't know how accurate this is, but the one thing I did notice as soon as I started using this is it feels so much faster than using Firefox. So it also has a list of like how many ads and trackers and how many like HTTPS upgrades you've done. Once again, don't know how accurate it actually is. I'm going to assume it is. It's so much faster that I have to ignore the fact that it's Chromium based because it just feels so much faster. Now, I don't know if it's just a placebo. I'm pretty sure it's not though. I've tried Firefox and Brave right next to each other and Firefox feels so much slower. Now, obviously Firefox might be better since I last used it. It's been a month or so since I last used it. So 
as I said, it could be faster now, but in the state when I swapped, Brave was just better. So Brave isn't perfect though, I have had a few issues with it, and I don't know if they are Arch problems, window manager problems, me problems, I'm not sure what they were. So sometimes when I reload BSPWM, it will actually take my little Brave icon here in my uh, system tray and stick it on the left side here. Don't know why, not really sure, but that's one of the problems I came across. And there was another major problem a little while back where for some reason, every single plugin crashed like every five seconds. It was fixed with a reinstall, so I don't know if that reinstall came with a new patch or if the reinstall was just a way to fix it. I'm not really sure. I didn't bother to actually check. So, as I said, it's not going to be perfect, but if it was a me problem in that case, then that's just ignore that problem. But I think it might have been a problem with Brave. I don't know. I, I didn't really see much reported about it, so I don't know. Now, being a Chromium-based web browser, you get complete access to the Chrome Web Store. Now, they claim that some of the apps aren't exactly compatible, but I haven't run into any problems along the way. So I've got LastPass working, I've got Virtual Shield. You can say whatever you want about Virtual Shield. I bought a subscription a while back, but anyway. VidIQ works fine, Stylish works fine, Honey works fine, and the BitTube app works fine. I presume that if they say that some of the apps aren't gonna work, they're just saying that on the off chance that something doesn't, there might be something built specifically with Google Chrome in mind. But from what I've seen, everything seems to work pretty much as you'd expect. So if you're coming from some other Chromium-based web browser like Chrome, for example, or Chromium, or I don't know, Vivaldi, all your plugins are probably gonna work, especially if you're coming from one of the Chrome builds. If they work on, say, Vivaldi, they're probably gonna work fine on Brave as well, so you're probably gonna be fine there. So there's some other neat stuff that Brave can do as well. So built into the web browser, you actually have an Ethereum wallet. So if we go to the crypto wallet section, then you'll see what this is. Now, I'm not gonna log into it right now, partially because I'm not using it, but partially because I don't wanna log in in front of you guys. Anyway, so it's an Ethereum wallet. And the reason it's an Ethereum wallet is because BAT is on the Ethereum network, so it just makes sense to use an Ethereum wallet. So I wouldn't recommend using a crypto wallet in your web browser, like actually built into your web browser. Now, the reason I wouldn't recommend doing that is because web browsers have a, uh, what's what's the word? A, a notoriety for being very, very insecure. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be a problem with Brave. It's just something I don't feel comfortable doing. Personally, I wouldn't want to store all my crypto directly in my web browser. I would want to have it in some separate app, preferably with no connection to my web browser whatsoever. But if you want to use it in your browser, then go right ahead and do that. You can do that if you want to. So I'm not going to tell you not to. I'm just going to say I would advise against it. So if you look under the extension section, we can see some of the default extensions it comes with. So there's a crypto wallets thing, which I just mentioned. You've got one for Hangouts. I I don't know why you would want to use that. There's much better ways to do online chat than with Hangouts, but whatever. There's a IPFS companion thingy. So that's the interplanetary file system. That's a, just a way to distribute files between different things. There's a media router for using a Chromecast in your web browser. So this one's really cool. I didn't mention this before, but you can actually use Tor within your Brave browser. Now I'll get back to that in just a moment, but let's just keep going. There's also WebTorrent and Widevine. I have no idea what Widevine is, but I guess that's a thing. I, I, Someone probably knows what that is. And under Manage Extensions, we can just see the extensions that I've installed. So nothing besides the ones that I just mentioned before. So let's just have a look at that Tor thing. So if we just go New Private Window with Tor, as we can see, we have opened up a Tor window. Now you can do all your sort of Tor stuff. So you can go like Anime there. This is a great use for reusing Tor. So obviously it's going to be quite slow because it's Tor. So just give it some time and there we go. So if you're very, very serious about security and you want more than just like blocking trackers and things like that, you can actually use Tor. So that is really, really cool. Now, I don't know much about Tor myself, but I just think that's a cool addition to have within Brave. I probably should look more into it. It, it seems like something that would really interest me. 
So I guess we can just end the video by having a little dive into the settings. So most of this stuff is basic web browser stuff. So you've got like your startup settings, you've got a profile. Personally, I'm not a big fan of web browser profiles. I like to have a lot of my stuff stored outside of my web browser. So if you don't know, I've got a script called book menu, which lets me do browser independent bookmarks. So I don't have any bookmarks, but if you do, then you can use a profile or if you've got another web browser, you've got them in, then you can import them. You've also got like your basic startup tab stuff where you want to continue and things like that. Nothing, nothing too crazy there. It's just basic web browser stuff. You've got some color scheme stuff and some appearance stuff. There is a built-in dark and a light theme. This is what the light theme looks like. I am never planning to turn this back on again because it is really gross. I think it defaults to the dark theme maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I've got the dark theme on now. It looks much better. But there are other themes you can use, so go ahead and have a look at that if you want to. I've just got it set to the classic theme. Now, one cool thing is if you don't want to use your standard system fonts, you can actually go and customize your fonts. So if instead of using your basic system sans font, you can change it to like, I don't know, whatever, source code pro. Yeah, you could use source code pro as your standard font, or you could just set it to whatever you want to. Now that's kind of cool if you want to have different fonts for your regular system and for your web browser. Personally, I like my system fonts to control my web browser just because it's a bit easier like that in case I do swap and then I do everything else with custom fonts. You can talk about how you, that's not a great idea, but personally, that's how I go ahead and do it. So yeah, you can go and customize all that. Nothing too special really. And then there's some stuff about how you want this thing up here to actually appear. So it's not actually appearing. Uh, do we have to be on a... There we go. Okay, so this will show like all the details for your shields and stuff. So if you don't want to see all those details, you can set it to like a simple view. And if we go back up here, now it just shows far less data. Obviously, if you don't really care about the information, then go ahead and leave it on the simple view. Personally, I like the advanced one just on the off chance that I do need to actually say disable some of this stuff and enable others. But it's up to you how you want to do it. You can also have things like upgrade to HTTPS, block scripts. You can have some social media blocking. And yeah, all of that stuff's pretty cool. And then down the bottom here, we've got the extensions. Most of this is pretty cool stuff. And obviously you can also select whatever you want your default search engine to be. So by default, we've got like DuckDuckGo, Google, Quant, Bing, and Start Page. I think it defaults to DuckDuckGo. Use whatever you want though. I'm personally gonna use DuckDuckGo. I know some people are gonna have problems with that. But if you wanna add something else in, then you can go to manage search engines. And I think, yeah, you can just click add here and add a new search engine. So if you wanna use Arcosia or whatever else out there, you could even use Yahoo if you really want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for Brave. So I think overall Brave is a really good web browser. Now, obviously I laid out the few problems I had with it. Like for some reason, Polybar behaves weirdly with it. I don't know why. And also the fact that it's a Chromium build. Now I am really bothered by the fact that it is a Chromium build and I would recommend that people do use this web browser, but uh, I, it really bothers me that it's a Chromium based web browser. I don't want to, I don't want to be using a Chromium browser, but it is just such a good browser that I kind of have to ignore that. Now, as I said, if a Firefox build of this ever did come up, I would instantly swap to it. I have no interest in using the Chromium version of Brave as soon as a Firefox version pops up. So hopefully someone can do that one day. I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. Otherwise, I might just do it myself. But I do hope that someone does that because if someone did, I feel like a lot of people would swap to Brave because a lot of people I've spoken to do like Brave, but they don't like the fact that it is Chromium based. And I can completely get behind that argument. So because of that, I'm not gonna recommend Brave to everyone. I do think you should probably try it out though. And if you do like it, stick with it. If it bothers you too much that it's Chromium based, then obviously go back to like Firefox or whatever it is that you're using, Pale Moon, Water Fox. It could be anything. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for this. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you wanna see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist of this videos in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links. So it's my Discord, my Telegram, and all of that stuff. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or get various video updates. 
Down below, I've also got my support links. So that's my Patreon and all my other donate links. So if you do want to support the channel, that's where you go for that. But obviously, you don't have to if you don't want to. But any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms. So that is my BitTube and my library. So go check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And I'm out.